Hi friends, uh, in this video I want to show you what we do in uh, Istanbul varicoselectomy technique and why we do it. Uh, so our technique uh, consists of four segments. One is microscope. We use microscope as everybody does. It's very important. And second is microvascular Doppler. Microvascular Doppler device. It's a very tiny Doppler device, which is very important. This is the one yeah, here. The tip of it is very tiny Doppler device. Uh, and it shows us the arteries and veins very easily. Uh, by this device, we can understand them very easily. And third is uh, we, we take out external and gubernicular veins. We take them out and fourth is we take out the internal spermatic veins. So everybody is asking why we, we take them out. It's important. So it is easy to understand microscope and Doppler device, but it is very difficult to understand why we take out the veins. So let me tell you how normal system works. So this is testicle and this testicle needs blood. Blood must uh, come into these testicles. Blood supply is important. So we have an artery, spermatic artery, we call it. It's not a big one. This artery in the inguinal region is one branch so and then when it come close to testicle it is divided into branches there is a couple of branches like that and there is a uh, the artery is come into the testicle it feeds the testis and then uh, the blood is used and the dirty blood goes back through veins and there are the veins normally the veins go to the body. Here they form some plexuses around the testicle. And they are not too much wide. They must be uh, narrower than 3 millimeters. So these are the veins. They form a plexus around the artery. We call it pompiniform plexus. So they are settled around the artery. And there are some veins like this going from this side. This is external spermatic vein. And gubernicular veins are here. They are from scrotum. They are in between the scrotum and the testicle. So all of the veins must be the diameter must be uh, smaller than three millimeters when it is larger than three millimeter this is varicocele this is not good if they are uh, greater than three millimeter in size the testis will be affected badly because it will heat up and this heat in the testis will uh, destroy the spermatic tissues so when these veins are large gets larger and forms varicose veins we have to take them out we have to uh, make them disappear by surgery so what we do in a classic surgery is we ligate these veins from inguinal area not from testicle from the inguinal area why we do it because in around testis there are many veins many branches and here in the inguinal area they come together and the branches come unite and they form less branches so operation is done in the inguinal area and what is done is ligating them and sometimes ligate two parts and uh, take out some part of it cut in between so what happens now let me show it more diagrammatic. This is testicle. Artery comes from here. 
and there is also one was deference spermatic vessel it's like that and uh, it has arteries one little artery and a little vein around it so this is a normal blood supply but the the veins are now uh, enlarged varicose veins happened let me show it diagrammatically okay now there is a big vein this is very varicosal vein uh, actually it's a plexus but i show it as a single vein to understand better so when this vein is very large greater than three millimeters this and it is always tortuous it hits this part which is unwanted we don't want it to happen so we have to get rid of this vein completely and what will happen then the blood uh, supply will come to testis the testis will be supplied by blood and the returning of the blood will be happen from this vasal vein the vein around the vas deferens and this vein never gets very close why because it, it turns to main blood stream from a shorter route here from the pelvic area but this testicular veins go back to the body from uh, vena cava which is very which is located very high and it has a long course long route and it becomes tortuous and very coast so in this operation we want to eliminate this vessel and make the blood come into testicle and turn back from this vasal veins so uh, varices will be finished so what's done in the classic operation is we ligate uh, from inguinal area this part and this part of the vein and cut in between to stop the blood circulation throughout this vein and what happens is the blood flow stops and when the blood flow stops uh, the blood is clotted blood clots formed inside this vein and the bloodstream inside the vein stops and then blood comes into testes they try to go back from here but they cannot go and they find this new route here and this vasal vein never uh, gets larger because it is empty to the mainstream from a shorter way and then uh, the blood uh, supply will come will go from here and varis will be over heat of the testes will lower down and the problem will be over but there is a pitfall of this operation because after the operation when we do doppler ultrasonography we sometimes see actually 30 percent of the cases this vein never disappears and uh, we are expecting blood flow to stop in this vein but it doesn't stop in some cases so i investigated and researched this process and understand that uh, and mostly i learned this from uh, cardiovascular surgeons we are the we, which are the uh, very very surgeons for leg varices in some patients there may be collaterals as you may remember this is a pumpiniform plexus around the artery so if in the operation we mistakenly forget one of these little tiny veins and if it has some inter uh, branches tributaries with these veins little veins the blood flow may continue from this vessel and the blood flow never stops in this big varicose vein which must disappear so when blood clots uh, when blood flow is continued blood clot will not be formed in this large vessel and this last vessel will not disappear by time when i discussed this with cardiovascular surgeons they offered me to remove this vessel completely i said 
Okay, it's possible, but it's not written in any of our books, never. But I know that uh, urologists do not do Doppler ultrasonography after the procedure by themselves. They uh, send the patient to radiologist and radiologist do the Doppler and they are not aware of the procedure and the urologist is not aware of the vessel. So this is a misunderstood, uh, not understood problem. Uh, so I improved this technique. So what I do very simply is I take out this vessel as long as possible. I take out the external spermatic veins and I take out the internal spermatic veins, which is sometimes not possible because sometimes they are in close connection with the arteries. So at that case, if there are too much connection, uh, they are too much uh, beside the artery and too much connections, I cannot uh, separate them. I tie them in such one point, like in, in a classical conventional operation, and I wait. They fill with blood, they swell, and I tie it again, the swollen part, and I wait. The blood filled inside the vein, it swelled, I tie it again. Sometimes four or five times I tie these veins if I cannot take them out completely. But mainly, if it is possible, which is uh, most of the time possible, I take this vein out completely. Uh, so what happens, the blood comes to testicle, it finds no way because it is uh, tied here, cut here, and it finds its way easily from uh, vasal veins. That is mainly what we do in the operation. Even there are some missed veins, little tiny veins, this is no problem because uh, the problem is enlarged veins. So immediately after the procedure, when I look to test this with Doppler device, I see the artery, I see the blood supply, but I don't see any more large veins. If there are some closely attached veins here beside the artery, I, I may see here some veins ligated like this many times but they will disappear. Even they have little connections with these tiny veins, they find no place to go. Sometimes I stitch them completely, continuously. So I don't want the uh, veins to stay here and have a chance uh, like here. When we leave the vein here for self-disappearance and if it finds some tiny little branch tributate it will uh, the blood flow will continuously go on and the, this vein will not be clotted will not be coagulated blood clots blood clots will not be formed and it will not disappear so what's the percentage of success rate of conventional operation in three months these are my observations uh, in the literature, it is always mentioned higher, um, more uh, successful, but I think at three months with my Doppler, I see only 30% success rate. In six months, I see 50% success rate. In one year, I see 70% success with conventional varicocele ligation. But in our operation, the success rate is very high. Still, I have 3% recurrence rate. Even I know that I remove this sometimes, maybe because of this vessel, maybe because of some tiny vessels get larger, 3% I have recurrence. But I follow up the patient very closely after the procedure. If I see the recurrence, I immediately take the, this vein out. So this is a newly improved uh, procedure. Uh, I perform it this way. I uh, am influenced by vascular surgeons. They recommended me to do it that way. And I am happy with the results. And I call it Istanbul varicoselectomy.
Yes. It has one important feature, microvascular Doppler uh, device additionally, because in some cases there are more arteries, more sub-branches, and it's important to spare them, to find them. Uh, microvascular Doppler device helps us to perform this uh, and to achieve good successful results.